Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. We've got some very exciting paleontology news in the headlines this week, with the discovery of the smallest basilosaurid found so far, as well as the description of a new species of Triassic armoured marine reptile. Also, I'm filming this episode from a hotel room in Seattle. There's the Space Needle, pretty epic. Because, of course, Doug is at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, as you'll have seen from last week's episode. And then, so can you create two diagonal lines? Not diagonal, like that. Watch the Sorry, Anyway, here's the paleo news. First up for this week is the naming and description of another new basilosaurid, the lineage of prehistoric whales, including Basilosaurus itself, of course, as well as the very recently named Peru Cetus. This week's basilosaurid has been named Tutsitus ryanensis, and it comes from a locality in Egypt in rocks dating to about 41 million years ago. This site is around 40 kilometers northeast of the famous Wadi al Hatan site, or the Valley of the Whales, where Basilosaurus itself has also been found. The genus name Tutsitus is in honor of the pharaoh Tutankhamun and his nickname of King Tut, combined with the Greek word for a whale, Cetus. This name is not only in reference to his country of discovery, but also because, like King Tut, this particular Tutsitus died while it was still a subadult. A very nice partial skull, mandible, and first neck vertebra are known for this species and clearly show features of being a basilosaurid, especially in the teeth. The full body length of this whale is estimated at about 2.5 meters, or about 8 feet making it by far the smallest basilosaurid found, with the previous record holder, Sagacetus, being about 4 meters long. As well as being the smallest, Tutsitus is also now one of the oldest examples of a basilosaurid from Africa, showing that early on in basilosaurid evolution, these animals became fairly disparate in their body plans, reaching the enormous dimensions of basilosaurus itself, while smaller forms also evolved. The small size may also potentially be a response to a warming period that occurred around this time, known as the Late Lutetian Thermal Maximum. Additionally, the sedimentology of where Tutsitus was uncovered suggests that they may have been carving grounds for this and other cetaceans, as it was once a warm, shallow sea with lots of juvenile cetacean fossils found here. Tutsitus has enabled paleontologists to learn a lot more about how the basilosaurids became so successful and spread across the planet's oceans out-competing more archaic lineages of still somewhat semi-terrestrial cetaceans, and filling the new niches open to them. An absolutely fantastic fossil discovery. Also in the news for this week is the discovery of a very cool new species of Triassic armoured marine reptile from South China. Named Prosaurosphagus yingzishanensis, it's a type of reptile called a saurosphagid. This particular species is actually now the oldest example of a saurosphagid known to science, and the fossil specimen shows that it was about a meter and a half long, or about five feet, and possessed some fairly heavy armor, comprising bones called osteoderms. Like other saurosphagids, it also has a sort of rib basket that gives it an almost superficially turtle-like appearance. Saurosphagids have usually been found to be relatives of the Sauropterygians, the large group including the famous plesiosaurs and others. But with the newly named Prosaurosphagus, the paleontologists use the evidence from this fossil to show that Saurosphagids can actually be placed within the Sauropterygians, instead of being outside them. The paper also discusses the classification of a few other Triassic reptiles, clarifying this part of evolutionary history. Another very interesting Triassic discovery this week, then. Well, that's it for the paleontology news. I've had to try and keep this episode a little bit shorter as I'm flying home very soon, and Doug is also occupied elsewhere. But don't worry, because we have some very exciting news concerning Seven Days of Science to share with you soon. So be sure to watch our next few episodes for that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on Sunday.